This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. This is episode number, what, 104. Yes, I, for whatever reason, I decided, hey, I'm going to put the episode number at the front of this because for whatever whatever reason. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. My co-host this week is The Cat. Hello, everyone. Yes. I love, you know, before we started, you were just kind of, and you just go into this instant pet mode. I love it. <laughs> Right before we recorded, I was working out, and now I'm, like, barely awake at all. But put me in front of a microphone, and I'm good. Yeah, I know the feeling. <laughs> oh, God. So, uh, besides working out, how have you been the past few weeks? Uh, you know. It's all kind of normal. Yeah. So, just normal days, going in, going out, doing other things. You know, work, play, nothing really changes. Yeah. Oh, well, but such is life. I, on the other hand, have been just dealing with all things, getting ready for July postings with some of my other videos that I've been putting up there. Uh, working a little bit on the the review that I've had in the can for, oh, I don't know how long. I just need to edit it. <laughs> uh, but That's the hardest part, man. It is. It really is. Oh. So, Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God, things that have happened this week that I, – I, I put in a whole bunch of news stories this week, some of which I put in there because I know you would have something to say about them for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, see, I, I, I pay attention to what the fuck, so. <laughs> oh, but um, but real quick, I do want to get the shout-outs out of the way. Uh, mine is actually one – I don't think I've – I think we've – talked about some of his articles on the show before, but I don't think I've actually given him a shout-out. His name is Hemant Menta, and he's known as the Friendly Atheist. And if you, and he has videos up on YouTube, I think under uh, the Atheist Experience or something like that. And he does some really good, well, really informative videos that just talk about religion and atheism, just, you know, just like I'm talking to you right now. He's not beating you over the head with it. He's saying, you know, this is the information. Here is this. Here is my opinion if I have one. This is what the law says if it's a church and state issue, that sort of thing. And he's very good, very calm. And he's, again, you know, just great to go and watch. So go check him out. Uh, Herman Menta, uh, The Atheist Experience on YouTube. I know he also has, um, I think it's friendlyatheist.com, I think is his website as well. Which, again, I think we've talked about one of his articles either on this show or on Constructive Deconstruction at one point or another. So if you recognize the name or, or anything, that's why. <laughs> Unless you're actually a fan of him. Which you are, great. <laughs> you know, let him know. And, and hey, we'd love, we wouldn't mind having him on the show if we had like a purely religious show. Oh. So I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that you probably don't have a shout-out again? No shout-out, sorry. Yeah, usual. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'll surprise you, but most of the time I can be relied upon not to have a shout out. Yeah, but that's okay. That happens. Tis tis the life. It you know. Oh, but so with that all said, we're going to go ahead and just quickly get into our news. We got I put a whole bunch in here, some of which we could talk at length about, some of which we may not be able to. Some good, some bad. And if we have time, I do have one particular link I have I have yet to send Cat at, at, at this point, but uh, I'll save it if we have time for it. Um, but our first story comes out of Florida. Take a shot. You might need a few shots throughout this vi throughout this show. Let me just warn you. A Florida woman is wanted on kidnapping charges after she abducted her daughter, so she did not have to learn Black history or get vaccinated. What? Wait. What? Yeah. After Megan Everett and Robert Bauman split up, a Florida judge awarded joint custody of their daughter Lily to both parents. When Robert went to pick up Lily after a week with her mom recently, though, he found this note instead. You were a great dad, the mom wrote, emphasizing great by underlining it several times. But if I let them take her and vaccinate her and brainwash her, I wouldn't be doing what's right. I cannot let a judge tell me how my daughter should be raised. We will miss you, but I had to leave. <laughs> Judges, what the fuck? Uh, no, 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 judges are trying to 
Okay, it's it's one thing if you don't want to learn about a certain part of history. It's stupid that you don't want to learn about it. You, it leaves you incredibly ignorant and – or leaves your daughter incredibly ignorant, and she could grow up to be as racist as you apparently are. You know, But in, 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 in the whole greater sense, it's relatively harmless compared to not getting your child vaccinated. You know, that, that is uh. – Robert explained that his wife had strong opinions about vaccinations and thought they would harm their little girl. But he wanted Lily to be vaccinated so that she could attend preschool with other kids. She found this new idea that vaccines are horrible, Lily's dad told the Orlando Sentinel. I think she wanted to keep her from being vaccinated because that would keep her out of daycare. I have a sneaking suspicion that she subscribes to uh, the Jenny McCarthy School of Vaccination. In that she probably thinks – guess keep in mind hearsay and, and guesswork here. Not necessarily hearsay. But uh, she probably subscribes to the idea that vaccinations would cause aut autism when they don't. You know, uh. Megan also wanted to homeschool her daughter so so she would not be – so she would not subjected – be subjected. Guys, edit. Come on. Uh. So she would not be subjected to a public school education and could get an appropriate quote-unquote education that embraced her more extremist theories about race, guns, and history. She didn't want Lily to learn about black history. She just wanted her to learn about the Confederacy. Oh. What? One oh, of those people. Fuck. Now I can almost see this woman being so desperate to keep her child out of the public education system that she didn't want to vaccinate. I can actually see this now. Yeah. Oh. The portrait so has been painted. Oh, dear. What the fuck? Uh, court records suggest that Lily's actions were due in part to her new relationship with a man who is described as a Confederate flag-waving gun enthusiast. So it's not even it, – it, it's, it's not even – so it's, okay. Uh, so it's not just her own convictions, which I believe she may have some of these convictions. I, I have very little doubt of that. But they were exacerbated and encouraged upon, and apparently she got that push she needed – from this guy who thinks the same way she does. What the fuck? Uh, of course, when authorities had contacted the new boyfriend, he denied knowing where Megan was, but informed federal agents that Megan was aware of the costs of her actions, but thought it was worth it to save her daughter. Yeah. Save my daughter from learning about the black people. Well, now you're going to be charged with kidnapping, so... Yes, you are saving your daughter because now your slightly saner husband is going to have full custody. And let's assume that he actually has a brain and uh, is going to now have full custody and will go get his kids vaccinated and put into public school. Yeah, public school may have its faults, but it's there for a reason. You know, just school and – School in general is there for a reason, not just for educational purposes, but you get out there among other kids. You learn how to socialize, whether it's public or private school. So keeping her out of school, keeping her homeschooled, she's going to be socially stunted, even worse than somebody who is more introverted going to public school. Now, that's not to say that all people who attend homeschool are socially stunted. Right. Um, that's to say a parent like this homeschooling – would be a terrible, terrible experience. Right. And it's just, she, she like, like my aunt who tried to homeschool her kids like years ago, you know, when I, I think I was maybe elementary, maybe middle school at the time, she was trying to homeschool her kids. Ah, no, 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 not so much. Although I think it had less to do with any kind of religious purposes than just, well, she was lazy and didn't want to take them. That's my that's my assumption at the time, and knowing my aunt the way that I do, that's all. Oh, uh, so yeah. Ah, uh, so yeah. God damn it! Really? Because okay, and you know what? In public school, you will learn about the Confederacy. You will, because it's a part of history. It's a part of our American history. The Confederacy happened. And and I know as much as the Confederacy doesn't want to admit, but black people are part of our history too. And yes. and. Let's face it, black history, we only spend one month learning about it, which is a travesty. 
Yeah. Um, it really is. But that's the way our public education system has chosen to function. So it's not like even if you don't want your kids to learn that there are dark people, um, that there are people out there who aren't hot, um, you're really only going to spend one solid month having lessons forced in about it. Yeah, and even if you don't go to public school, what's going to happen when when the, her daughter goes out into the world and sees people that have darker skin? No, seriously, you live in Florida. Yeah. Are you going to not talk about Cubans or something? <laughs> I mean, hell, I live in the taint of Florida, and I can walk down to the store, and I would probably see more Hispanics and black people than I do white people. That That's how prevalent you know non-whites are in Florida. So it's like, yeah, you, you're, you're going to run into them. You're probably going to run into similar problems in Georgia, Alabama, South Carolina, pretty much anywhere in the south. I'm willing to guess. The only way the states may look whitewashed is our politicians. And the politicians, politicians are not indicative of the majority of a particular race in a state. No, this is like – like when you go to small towns and it's all white people and then you actually go to civilization and it's all black people and you're like, wow, diversity is a thing. Like, yeah, <laughs> you are not the only person of your color, no matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you want to believe. Yeah, and like, I'm very thankful for that because that would be weird if there was like only one – just imagine if there was like only one white person in the world. Just, I'd have to wonder, and and it would be our luck that this one white person would think he is better than everybody else, and just to see him try and lord this over everybody else and be so ineffective by it. <laughs> that would be beautiful. That would be somebody. Oh, I, I, oh, that that needs to be an idea for a skit, man. Just that that would be that would be hilarious. Um, and and of course it would be someplace like Arkansas where this would end up happening. Probably. <laughs> Fuck uh, Arkansas. Yeah. Especially after this next story. Uh, the high priest of an Arkansas temple said that the city of Bebay – Bebay? Is that related to eBay? I don't know. Ordered him to close after finding out his religion was pagan, not Christian. High priest Bertram Dahl told KARK that – Bebay Mayor Mike Robertson had initially supported his plans to open a seeker's temple and spiritual goods shop in the garage behind his home. We knew When they knew we were going to open a church, it wasn't an issue, he explained. We explained to the mayor that the house had a building that we could open the church in, and he had no problem. But Dahl said that the city's attitude changed after learning that members of the temple were pagan. Ooh, <gasps> oh, pagan! No. We were basically given a cease and desist, you know. Shut down. We hadn't even unpacked. We aren't even open. How are we getting this, Dahl asked. Although he had not even applied for permits yet, Mayor Robertson let it be known that he thought that no conditional or special use permits should be given to Dahl. That same day, the city's code officer sent a letter ordering Dahl to cease and desist. City Attorney Barrett Rogers in insisted to KARK that Dahl could not be allowed to open the temple because his residential property was not zoned commercial, which is what's required for a place of worship or retail business. Really? So it was okay when it was a Christian thing, but as soon as it's a pagan thing, oh, no, 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 there's all these problems, and this can't be allowed, and this, this isn't right, what? Yeah, that's just, <laughs> and it gets better. Dahl, however, pointed out that the properties that were zoned R2 we were allowed to have places of worship and private nonprofits according to the city's code. He said that he had asked the mayor's office for permit applications even though he was told it would never be approved. Okay, zoned R2. I'm assuming that's what this guy's place is. If it's R2 and you know, and it's a place of worship and nonprofit profit private place, then should not be a problem legally. So I'm assuming it's an R2. Otherwise, I don't think he would go through it. So, uh, you know, but from what it's looking like, the city is like, oh, it's not a Christian, or at least the mayor is like, it's not a Christian church. We can't allow that to happen here in Arkansas. Mm. And here is the kicker. When KRK asked Mayor Robertson about the paperwork, he said that there was no permit he could apply for. Robertson declined to be interviewed on camera. 
Dahl also appealed to his alderman for assistance, but the alderman told K.A.R.K. that Dahl's god isn't my god. If this isn't a blatant fuck you to anything that isn't Christian by a mayor, I don't know what is. I just, um, I just foresee a very beautiful lawsuit to follow, and hopefully they'll get some justice, and I really hope they get to build this pagan temple and 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 do whatever the fuck they want because this is nine kinds of wrong and and zero zero surprises that it came out of Arkansas. Yeah, which which you sit right on top of technically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, I've been through Arkansas. It's pretty. Some of the people that I've met there are really friendly. But as long as you're white, as long as it, it must be stated that people <laughs> from the Midwest and small towns are very, very nice as long as you're white. <laughs> you know, actually, one of our listeners is from Arkansas. He's probably going to pop on there and be like, hey, now, 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 now. I'm, knows, I'm not agree. saying all Arkansas people are horrible. I'm just oh. saying that I go to visit my aunt in Arkansas and there are zero black people in town. And they're about 20 minutes from uh, like the state headquarters of the KKK. Oh, jeebus. Wow. <laughs> oh, but but yeah, I, I I agree with you on the lawsuit thing. There there is going to be a lawsuit coming out of this because yeah, there is a little thing. What is it? Oh yeah, the First Amendment, which is freedom of religion, right? Freedom to practice any religion that you want, obviously as long as it's not hurting people. And the government can't say no, you can't do that. Except in Arkansas, we seem to have a big thing about the Arkansas does not give a shit about the Constitution. Yeah, obviously not. But of course, if if this whole if the whole thing is around a zoning thing anyway, like you stated earlier, if it was a Christian church, they wouldn't have given a damn about any kind of codes. I'm pretty sure. Probably not. I I know this. I know this in my heart of hearts. Yes. <laughs> Oh, but at least when the lawsuit inevitably comes around and smacks them upside the head and, and pokes them in the ass a little bit, we're going to be laughing our asses off. See, my thought, though, is that it, it, the lawsuit probably wouldn't go in the favor of, of the pagan church because it – like the fucking – when all of your politicians <sighs> – so fucking corrupt. Again, they don't really care that much about the Constitution except for the Second Amendment. So uh, when you when you elect people like that, you are setting yourself up for disaster. Yeah. It's certainly not going to get – I just have to think that they'll get justice, but I doubt it because it's Arkansas. I hope so. I hope it doesn't turn into a case like Louisiana where they ban lawsuits against certain big oil companies because they're worried about big oil profits going into their pockets. Bobby Jindal, fuck you. Mm. Yeah, I'm not even from Louisiana, and, 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 and I just want to kick Bobby Jindal out of office. Just fuck him. Uh, fuck him hard with, 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 with Satan's penis. Yeah, that's got to be big and red and – Warm and – well, not warm, but boiling hot and, and sandpapery. It, either way, it is not going to feel good. It's got a million little spikes on it. Yes. Sandpapery spikes too. Not only are the spikes sharp, you got sandpaper spikes. Oh. And everybody is now clinching. <laughs> oh. Wow, we need to never talk ever again. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yeah, I got to be – I, I got to be careful because uh, – because I don't want to end up like this girl from Bolivia in our next story. Research report the curious medical case of a six-year-old girl from Bolivia who had uncontrollable and inappropriate fits of laughter. She was considered spoiled, crazy, even devil-possessed, because only the devil will make you break out in, in breakdown laughter. Oh. Now, and this was stated by uh, Jose Linders Burgos Zuleta of the Advanced Medical Image Center in La Plaza, Bolivia. Diagno doctors diagnose her, diagnose her with misbehavior. Because that's an actual medical term, right? What? That's <laughs> like when you put your to toddler in the corner. <laughs> yeah. You have a medical condition. You are misbehaving. So to treat that medical condition, you must go sit, stand in the corner or sit in the corner, whichever, for 20 minutes. There you go. Yeah, and expect a three-year-old to do that, or even a four-year-old. Right. Yeah, they're going to stay down there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah. 
After imaging her brain using CT, PET, and MRI scans, Litters Burgot, Burgois, whatever, and colleagues were able to diagnose the cause of the girl's gelastic or laughing seizures. They st discovered a harmatoma, a small benign tumor-like growth pressing on the temporal lobe of her brain. So it, it's just this thing is applying the pressure and, and, and it, it's causing the just everything to be funny, I guess, or at least you know making her laugh a whole lot. It's like I don't think it's funny, but I've got this thing on my brain. Oh, and 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 and, and it, it's so far. I mean, she seems to be well, other than the laughing fits. Okay, gelastic seizure was first described in 1877 and comes from the Greek word gelos for laughs. Normal laughter is an emotional reflex and its accompanying motor action of, involves the hypothalamus, the temporal cor cortex, rather, and several regions of the brainstem. I did not know this. Gelastic nerves, nervous, let me read that again. I rented this tongue. I need to get my money back. Gelastic nervous breakdowns occur mostly in the temporal lobe, and the rare condition is more frequently diagnosed in children. After surgery to remove the tumor, the child's now healthy and developing normally without further seizures. The doctor's hope her case will help parents and neurologists better diagnose children with apparent behavioral issues in Latin America. So, I, I just, I just like the whole idea that 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 she had these laughing fits, and one of the things they think of is she's possessed by the damn devil. I like the one where that she's spoiled. How? What correlation do you have between laughing like strangely at everything and being? Spoiled? Boiled. Yeah, but <laughs> I just don't even know. It's like, what? The, what? How do you get to one place? Unless, unless you're like, unless you like uh, noticing her uh, laughing, like whenever she gets something, and she gets something really nice or whatever, and the other kids are jealous, and and you know she doesn't mean to, but she just all of a sudden like, <laughs> and and of course the other kids are thinking, oh, you're 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 a spoiled little bitch. I could see that happening. It, it, it would I be guess. A, it would be a horrible case of timing, but it could happen. Very horrible case. And speaking of horrible, oh, oh, the reason why I put this story in here is because it is it, this happened like 50 plus miles away from where I am. It, it's pretty close. Oh, out of Panama City, Florida, of all places. A musician, teacher, and new father is dead after a stray bullet pierced the wall of his Florida home on Tuesday and struck him in the back of the head. The Panama City News Herald reported that 33-year-old Justin Ayers and his wife were welcoming their three-year-old baby home from the hospital with relatives when Justin was killed. That is extremely unfortunate. That's uh, just, ah. Uh... Yeah, the bullet came... Go ahead. Oh, no, no, go ahead, actually. Okay. The bullet came from the house next door where 62-year-old Charles Edward Schisler picked up a 9mm pistol by the trigger, causing it to discharge. When sheriff's deputies arrived, they found Schisler standing on his porch, although he was initially belligerent and uncooperative. The damn gun doesn't usually shoot, he said, according to the re arrest report. You have to squeeze the hell out of the trigger to shoot it. Well, you picked it up by the trigger. And if you're like me, you don't think about, you know, picking something up gingerly. Especially if you think you're grabbing a gun by the hilt, you know, you know, by by the handle to where you're not accidentally squeezing the hell out of the trigger. And they did find out that the guy had a blood alcohol level of 0 0.079, which is just under the legal limit for driving in Florida. It's just, ah. Uh. And, of course, after the gunshot, he's like, oh, shit, and tried to hide it under his mattress. And here's the other kicker. He was arrested, and they charged him with manslaughter and for being a convicted felon in possession of a handgun. <sighs> See, we were good. We were like, this is just an unfortunate incident. This is, you know, just some guy who just didn't think clearly. But no, no, he was a convicted felon who shouldn't have had a handgun and did. Yeah. This is why background checks are a need to be more of a thing, because proper background checks, oh, this guy's a felon. Do not sell him a gun, unless he got it through illegal means, which, you know, admittedly, background checks may not do jack shit, but you know what? It would make it harder for him to get one. 
because at least up here, I can't tell you where to illegally get a gun, and I've lived here for the majority of my life. I, I cannot tell you these things. Ah, oh, it's just damn. And 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 it was just this guy who literally just had he and his wife, you know, his wife just had a baby, and it's like holy shit, that is not a good thing. Ah, oh, motherfucker. <sighs> so, we go from that, because there, there's no way I'm going to be able to segue out of that one properly. Oh, God. So, we'll just go on to the next one. A Texas man, oh boy, is refusing to remove an American flag from the balcony of his new apartment after management allegedly told him it was a threat to the Muslim community. What? <laughs> yeah. According to local outlet KHOU, Dui Tran, and, and that's the actual name, moved into the lodge on El Dorado in Webster, Texas a few days ago and promptly hung a flag on his balcony. He claims the apartment manager told him to remove the flag, but Tran says he's waiting to see proof that he doesn't have the right to hang it. And, he, and the KHOU also reported patriotic decorations were visible on other apartments in the complex. While the lodge on El Dorado Lodge, rather, on El Dorado admires our residents' patriotism. We must enforce property rules and guidelines, reads a statement given to the outlet by the management office. Such guidelines maintain the aesthetics of our apartment community and provide for the safety of all residents. The apartment community already proudly displays our country's flag in a safe and appropriate manner at the entrances to our community. That seems – okay. You know, okay, safety. That, that would be my first thing. Outside of this supposedly being told it was a threat to the Muslim community, I think the guy, you know, you know, is saying that the management told him this just to, just to stir up shit. I think. I think if the management did have a problem with it, it was probably more of a safety issue than anything else. I am willing to bet. But. It also says it's unclear whether the regulation is in violation of the Freedom to Display the American Act Fa Flag Act of 2005, which states the following. A condominium association may not adopt or enforce any policy or into any, in, enter into any agreement that would restrict or prevent a member of the association from displaying the flag of the United States on residential property within the association with – within the association, rather. I'm just tonguing all over the place, apparently – with respect to which such member has a separate ownership, interest, or right to exclusive possession or use. Uh, so it's it's a flag issue. Unless there is some sort of a safety issue, then the flag should be able to stay up because it is you know the flag. I think it's not harming anybody. And unless you're just some sort of really anti-patriotic scumbag. Odds are that's not going to offend anybody. That's not going to threaten anybody. And and it's just – it's there. It is a flag. You know, let them keep it there. But on, on the part of this guy complaining, I think I, – I strongly think that him saying that it's a – you know, it's him saying that the management told him it's a threat to the Muslim community. I think he's just saying that to stir up shit, honestly. It's just – it's just not happening. I doubt that it's you know having to do with any kind of Muslims or anything else, because I don't think Muslims around there would give a shit. You know, they're like, okay, we are in America, that is their flag. Okay, whatever. Uh, if I had any doubt, there it is. You know, my doubts are quelled. Uh, do you have something to add on this? No, I mean, I'm I'm with you. I it really feels like uh, this is probably something that he quoted possibly incorrectly or uh you know like him speculating and and it's and it's like there's no proof that they said this so we'll never really know yeah because as as of the time we're recording this and the time i got this story you know the management at the lodge on el dorado didn't immediately respond to the to the request of the Huff huffington post for it for uh, comments or anything so we don't know. If there's an update and we get a hold of it, then we'll, we can let you know some way or another. <laughs> oh. This next one is short, but it's out of Japan. <clears throat> and this one, this one, this actually goes back. I'm, I'm actually remember the last one of the last times we actually talked about something like this was when we had Josh Hadley on the show. <laughs> oh. 
Japan's parliament has passed a law which bans possession of child pornography, but excludes sexually explicit comics, animation, and computer graphics. The upper house voted today, or whenever this was, to approve the law, which was passed by the lower house earlier this month. The law provides for prison terms of up to one year and fines of up to one million yen. Uh, according to this, translates to uh, 5,800, I, I guess, pounds. For possession of pornographic photographs or videos of children, it allows a grace period of one year for people owning such materials to dispose of them. The law was first proposed in May 2013 as an amendment to an earlier law that banned production and distribution of child pornography, but not ownership of such materials. This, I think, is how you do it. I've, I've said it before on the show. If no child is being harmed, if no physical real child is being harmed, then there is no issue from me. It squicks me out to see things like that in animation or, or comics or anything, but I, at least I can know that an actual child was not being actually hurt, and I will be fine with that in the long run. Just don't expect me to get into it, you know? No pun intended. Uh, so Japan did a very good thing. They're saying, you know, by saying, hey, no child getting hurt, we don't have a problem. You have stuff that shows children being hurt and you're hurting children this way, fuck you, you're going to jail. If you have some of it right now, you've got one year. One year, get rid of all this shit. Toss it in the ocean. Let the whales eat it. We don't care. Mm. Now... Do, how, I, I, I am curious. How much? How much do you have to say about this one? Considering, um, I, I think it's it's a good step. Um, Japan walks a very uh, thin line because they really don't want to uh, quash people's creativity. They really want to make sure that people who are creative aren't getting censored unnecessarily. And uh, they have tried in the past, and they've succeeded in um, limiting, or uh, no, rather, um, how do I put this? They've several times redefined what's considered pornography, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, they have a lot of restrictions on sexually explicit material in your comics and your animation and computer graphics. And those get a little more stringent uh, every year. Right. Um, and so they run into a problem with all of the, I wouldn't say unions, but there's all these alliances between all of the publishers and the artists and the, the anime companies and stuff like that who don't want any more limitations because it really quashes their kinky creativity. Yeah. Um, and so they don't want anything, you know, they really don't want it to change any more than it already does. And so they walk this very thin line in terms of uh, what is considered sellable and, and what should have a uh, 18 and over only rating and stuff like that. Right. Um, so that stuff is always being contended and it's always really, you know, like, you know, groups fighting each other over that sort of thing. Um but I think this is a nice, nice sweeping good move. You know, like keep your weirdo, uh, your whatever your fetish is, keep it in your comics, keep it in your animation. Just don't keep it in real life. And and this is a thing that I talk about a lot. And I'm all for having whatever your weird fetish is in a comic book. Because if you put it on paper, if you put it on your TV, as long as it's not real people... Again, like you said, nobody's getting hurt, and at least in Japanese society, they can get all of their kinks out watching it or reading it and not doing it in real life. Exactly, and, and that's definitely the safest way to go. That's why, that's why I, I don't remember if I've said this on a show before, but when it comes to like that particular part of societal problems or whatever, I differentiate between pedophile and child molester. Because while a pedophile can be a child molester, you know, it, it all depends on his or her actions. A pedophile is just turned on. They may not do anything to harm a child. They may never want to harm a child because they know if they did, they would be really horrible people. So they have to have their outlets. Thus, you have the comics, the animation, the, the, the fiction, basically. And that's healthier, and that's safer. 
So, so this right here, allowing that, and and you were talking about like the border border lines between a you know what they consider pornography or whatever. I'm just remembering I've seen some stuff from Japan, you know, just you know the quote unquote tamer stuff, and they digitize all the genitals. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, okay, that's it's yeah. I think it's because, weird, but yeah. because showing genitals on screen is bad. <laughs> yeah, says says the country that originate that has anime with gag boobs all over the place. Yes, well, yeah, boob, boobs are are not. It's not like you're showing off a dick. Oh yeah, because... a- according to fucking Game of Thrones, at least. <laughs> let's talk about HBO while we're on the topic. Oh dear, what did HBO do? I I, I will admit I have not caught up i've not been watching game of thrones i, I well, should know it's, it's the whole like in game of thrones they'll show off as many tits as humanly possible and they'll show off the vajayj hmm. but god forbid they put a dick on screen there huh. and there was a time where they did put a dick on screen and it was a prosthetic dick i've i've actually i remember when like sex in the city was bigger and I caught like little parts of it here and there, and you know what? There was a dick. It was like right there on the screen. You know, I think it was like two characters were falling out of a closet trying to have sex or whatever, and as they were falling over, whoop! Hey, there's a dick. It's like, and then they've had like porn documentaries and stuff on there where they would yeah. just show guys, you know, just standing around with their dicks, like, hey, what's up, guys? You know, I'm just waiting. Come somebody, somebody, please come fluff me. You know, just. It's like what what the hell? What the hell, it HBO? Just, it's it seems to be this trend where uh I, I don't know. It's it's just it's I guess there's something in the sensors that, that they get away with tits better than they do. Like the the dick to tit ratio. <laughs> We're talking about a dick and tit ratio now. <laughs> it's like it's like one in thirty or something, like one dick on the screen for every thirty pair of tits. Wow, it's it's a, like they've probably out of four seasons they've probably shown like not even one dick a season. Damn. Uh, I, I guess you know. I mean, I see nothing wrong with showing any genitals, no matter what. It's just you know, if you're going to be showing a lot of female body parts, and you're gonna go. You get as close to actual penetrational pornography as possible. Then just go the full Monty. You know, if the guy's going to be naked, unless the unless the actor is like not comfortable showing his actual cock and balls on screen, and then you you know you have to have some creative shooting there. And if that's the case, that's one thing. But you know, for for just the trend to go is like, oh, showing dicks is buy it because eh, whatever. Because I mean, our our privates are more private than female privates. Apparently, because you know what, I would have no problem showing my dick off on screen. <laughs> you know. Whereas I would not even show off my boobs on screen. I just, I wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, you see, it all two... depends on your level of comfort, you know. Exactly. So you know that, and that's perfectly fine. Both are valid, and and that's what people need to remember that there are more than one ways to you know to go about things, and not one way is right. You know, and try telling that to these people from Nam. The National Organization of Marriage, who decided, you know, they they, they wanted they're protesting the same sex marriage, and all that. <laughs> so they went to Washington. Anti same sex marriage protesters flocked to Washington to hear like minded speakers and express their personal opposition to LGBT rights, because apparently, if gays and bi's and and trans peoples have their rights, then the whole world is going to implode. Never mind that at this point, every state has had their gay marriage bans either overturned or challenged. So, and the world's not ending. It's still here. You know, you know that is not going to blow up the world. Big oil, on the other hand, they might blow up the world. Just completely by accident. Because they're idiots. Uh. Organized by the Conservative National Organization for Marriage, the March for Marriage spe- features speeches by former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee and former Pennsylvania Senator Rich Santorum. Is that supposed to be Rich or is it supposed to be Rick? Uh, Rick. That is supposed to be Rick. <laughs> oh, God. I think so. Yeah. Because these are people you want behind you. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, dear. When we hear time and time again from some in the media that, are the, that the fight to protect marriage is over, we are here today to say no! Non President Brian Brown said to the roughly 2,000 supporters in attendance, We are here to say that no matter the circumstances, no matter how difficult it may be, we will stand in and out of season for the truth of marriage. Which means, well, if it's the truth of marriage, then I should be able to marry all, you know, I should be able to marry you, Holly, and Omega all at once. Because if that, if we're going to go with biblical truth, guess what? Polygamy was in the Bible, if we're going to go that way. Okay? I, one of my giantest pet peeves are people who like to quote the Bible for inspiration, for vi- thinly, thinly veiled hatred, and and then ignore everything else in the Bible. It's just fucking stupid. You can't go. The Bible says homosexuals are bad, and and therefore our our marriages should only be like this. And then go. Oh, but 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 times have changed, and we don't buy women anymore. It's, that's just that's just silly in this day and age. Yeah, it's just silly, and and it gets even better. Gets even better if you can call it that. Despite the low turnout, tension still ran high, with one NOM supporter promising violence if same-sex marriage became the law of the land. One guy against an army. I'm imagining this. Like, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, nice Bolivian army ending for you, dude. Yeah, have fun. Marriage is under attack, and I think that homosexual marriage is an oxymoron and, abomin- and an abomination. And the anonymous attendee lamented to Media Matters, it's unfathomable. Well, we think you're an abomination, but we don't promise violence on you. Exactly. That's the difference between us and you. Yeah. And when he asked what he thought the consequence of nationwide marriage equality would be, he had just one word. Violence. Violence. Because I don't know how to deal with my problems in any other way. It all boils down to violence. Yeah. The interviewer attempted to ease the man off his, off his incendiary answer, suggesting he may have meant violence from pro-equality activists. But the non-supporter only doubled down on his threat. The state is saying my marriage will be equivalent to what homosexuals do and what homosexual relationships are, and it just can't be tolerated. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Homosexuals. A homosexual relationship is just like a heterosexual relationship. Ex- the only difference is that um, they have the same bits. That's all. There you go. They may or may not be putting it in different places than you put it, and yeah. that, that's that's the only difference. Yeah, like that's it. Like the same feelings go into it, or you know, lack of feelings, because this guy probably doesn't have really good sex with his wife anymore, and that's why he's so bitter. Oh. Um, <sighs> assuming this guy's married, which he yeah. might not be. Yeah, and if he's it's... not, then, yeah. Well, we see why he's not. <laughs> exactly. It's just. People cherry pick the Bible for whatever suits them and ignore everything else, and that just makes me angry and hate Christians. Well, yeah. Christian, well, uh, extremist Christians. Yeah. <laughs> I, I try and differentiate because there are good Christians out there, good little Christian soldiers out there minding their own fucking business and not giving a shit what goes on in other people's bedrooms. Exactly. Like, like seriously, you could legalize gay marriage. And how would you fucking know? Like, other than there being a law passed, what fucking difference would it make to that guy there? None. None at all? None. Because God knows that guy probably doesn't hang out with any gays, and God knows no gay people would want to be in a 50-foot radius of somebody who radiates that much vitriol for other human beings yeah so like what does it matter to him what other people do how is he gonna know unless he's standing at the water cooler in his nine to five office job listening to the one random gay person in the office talk about the really hot sex he had last night with his new husband like Mm -hmm. unless that is gonna happen how are you ever going to know that the gays are having fun yeah I mean, it's just, you can assume all you want, but, you know, that's assumption. That doesn't mean they're actually doing it. Like, I could assume that, that you know, two lesbians that walk down the street are on their way home to do some mutual muff diving. I don't know. You know, I don't know that. That's my assumption. That doesn't mean they are. And it honestly doesn't bother me. You know, and it shouldn't bother me. And it shouldn't bother anybody else. It's like, hey, whatever. 
Oh. I mean, anybody who spends that much time thinking about other people's sex lives and other people's married lives is clearly not having enough enjoyment in their own. Yeah. Tell me about it. Oh. So out of Denver. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Still trying to not cough up lungs here. A report released Monday shows Denver police officers searched a drug suspect repeatedly before he opened fire at them after his arrest. Denver police say the suspect, 32-year-old Isaac Vigil, was being transported to the police station in handcuffs when he pulled a gun from the crack of his buttocks and fired at officers. So how small was that gun, I wonder? I don't know. The report released by the Denver District Attorney says Vigil fired at officers twice before his gun jammed. <laughs> his butt gun? His butt gun jammed. <laughs> I'm almost afraid to ask how it how it jammed. <laughs> Ass gun. <laughs> Jack Harkness, this man is not. Oh. According to the court documents, Denver police narcotics detective arrested Vigil on May 14th in a McDonald's parking lot after seeing him smoke meth. Oh, boy. Vigil was busted for possession of drug paraphernalia and a warrant for assault, felony menacing, and possession of a weapon from Adams County. Police had called for a uniformed officer in a patrol car to assist them during the arrest because Vigil was violent and aggressive behavior. I think he was violent and had aggressive behavior, but okay. The officers needed a car that had a cage in the back to transport Vigil. After his arrest, police say Vigil threatened several times to shoot the officers and that he wanted to die. He also, Well, meth is a hell of a drug. Uh, he also allegedly told police that he had been smoking meth for three days and did not want to go back to prison. Well, then you wouldn't, shouldn't have smoked meth now, should you? Hey, there's your first mistake. Well, probably not your first mistake, but... Yeah. He was searched before putting, being put in the back of the police car, but officers noted it was difficult to search him because he was highly agitated. Well, that's why you hold the fucker down. According to the DA's report, the Denver police officer searched Vigil three times before putting him in the back of the patrol car. Did you search? Obviously, you did not search his ass. You That, that one last place you did not get, you did not search his ass. Well, I mean, is that normal? I mean, if you're searching for drugs and you know they're going to be going into a jail-like facility, you would think. At least I would think so because you never know what they could smuggle in. Because I would think there'd be somebody at the uh, whatever facility they were taking him to that is there specifically to uh, sanitarily search his ass with, like, gloves and peroxide or whatever it would take to get that off of you afterwards. Mm, you got a, got a point there. Officers say that when they arrived at the police district, Vigil refused to get out of the car and fired two shots from behind his back. That's when police shot at him, injuring him in the stomach. Well, hey, you know, I mean, you shoot at me. I don't care if you're trying to shoot from behind your back or whatever. You know, that could be lethal and dangerous. So react accordingly. Uh, the Denver District Attorney investigated the shooting, and in a letter released Monday, the DA's office said, I conclude that under applicable Colorado law, no criminal charges are fileable against Corporal Sines Sinceros. I, I guess that's whoever was doing the thing. My decision based on criminal law standards does not limit administrative action by the Denver Police Department where non-criminal issues can be reviewed or civil actions where less stringent laws, rules, and legal levels of proof apply. Uh, okay, so – but the guy is facing attempted murder charges now, and he's he's at the jail after spending some time at a hospital recovering from his injuries. And yeah, this is like, dude, what the hell? Oh. Oh, god damn. Oh, and, and according to the report, he also had two baggies of meth hidden in his rectal area. So he had a gun and he had more meth. Because that's what you need in prison, right? You need some guy being methed out and just going crazy on the other prisoners. Yeah, that that that's that would be a oh god, just mammoths help them if somebody smuggles in bath salts and gives it to everybody. There'd be nothing left. Well, I think when you go to prison, that's when they strip search you and make sure that you don't have anything in any of your cavities. Yeah. But, oh, God, just, wow. Oh, so, so from that, we're going to head over to Daytona Beach, Florida. Take another shot. And this one is this one is relatively short. 
A Daytona Beach man was arrested Monday night after police say he choked a 12-year-old boy and chased him around a restaurant. According to the police report, the victim made a comment to his mother that Jeremy Al- Almedia, 32, did not like. Almedia proceeded to choke the child and then chase him around the restaurant. He later trapped the boy on a pool table and choked him again, police said. The incident occurred at a restaurant at the South Block on South Atlantic Avenue or whatever. Almedia, Almedia was arrested walking away from the scene and charged with child abuse. Officials said the mother was drunk and refused to cooperate. I don't understand where the mother come into this, but okay. So, so wait, he made a comment to the kid's mom, and 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 that didn't go over well. So he's trying to hurt the kid. That's what it sounds like. What the fuck, Florida? Get your shit together. Yeah, I mean, come on, guys. I'm in here for however long. I, I'm stuck here for however long. I have to be stuck here. You know, let's at least make it tolerable. Come on. You know, let's have some good come out of the state. You know, more than just actually banning bestiality. Come on. You know, we need more good than that. Oh, so, my God. Sorry, but I'm at the point where we need, like, a sterilization program for our entire country. Yeah. Political sterilization. Let, let's start with that. Because you know you're going to have enough stupid people that if you if you put the right politicians in place, that will go to the places that – need to be going, then the stupid people will follow and maybe not be so stupid anymore. Oh my god, that would be the greatest red herring ever. That would be. Oh my god, we need to do that. Yes. Just collect people with all these extremist views and then we'll get them all together for like a like a like a dinner or something and you're like, we're gonna have a speech here from uh, fake senator so and so (laughs) and (laughs) and then you just take them all aside and sterilize them prevent them from breeding. There you go. Or just put it in their food. Can you... That would be so simple. Yeah. Unfortunately, although it might be too simple because somebody might get the bright idea to put it into the general population. Ugh. Yeah. But that would be a good idea. You know, sterilizing the, the, the extremists in power. And we mean and we mean that in the sexual sense. We don't mean kill them. Don't want to kill them. Yeah. Although sometimes... Yeah, it's very tempting to do so, especially... When you've got people we're, – we're down to our last story, and we've got about like seven or eight minutes left in the show. So – but we'll – I think we'll manage it. The Robertson family has made a fortune selling duck calls to hunters. For years, the clean-shaven clan ran their business honestly out of the public eye. But then they decided to grow beards so they could have their own reality television program. Duck Dynasty has been airing on A&E ever since, and the family has only embarrassed themselves repeatedly for everyone to see. Last year, family patriarch Pil- Phil Robertson rather revealed himself to be a homophobe and racist during an interview that appeared in GQ magazine. He compared homosexuality to bestiality and condemned gay people to hell. Then he insulted African Americans by claiming that black people were happier during the pre-entitlement, pre-welfare era of Jim Crow. Woohoo! Yeah! The comments stirred national outrage, and A&E suspended him from the show. Good on them. But that didn't last long as conservatives protested and the network lost its spine. Boo. The video the then video surfaced of Robertson calling on men to marry teen girls so that they so that they could put their two young wives in their place before they become women who can think for themselves. That I did not know about before I read this article. What the fuck? <sighs> I, I think are, are you just stunned over there it's like, like... Uh, I there there are no words there there really are I mean the only I could just come up with two fuck and you but uh, just I have nothing intelligent to say to something that fucking stupid yeah it's like, it's like really dude and these and these kinds of people are the ones people out there are glorifying. These are people being glorified. No, you do not you should not glorify these people. These these are not worth glorifying. And and, and yeah, it's my opinion, but I know I, I know several a lot of, you know, I'm going to I'm going to venture a guess and say several thousand people share my opinion that these guys should not be glorified. They should have stayed and 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 ran their duck calls calling business and stayed out of the public eye 
That way they could just keep all their shit to themselves. Nobody would be the wiser. I don't understand why people this stupid ever open their mouths. Like, it wasn't... It wasn't enough for them to just, like, one or two times go out into the public and say shit that we fundamentally, as a society, know are wrong. Mm -hmm. But they have to come in, and they they just keep opening their mouths. Why? Why do they do that? Yeah. And in another case of where I get to say fuck, well, I don't know if it's Bobby Jindal's fault, but I'm going to blame him anyway. Uh, Well, guess what? It turns out Louisiana pa- taxpayers are paying for this, literally. Even though the Robertson family preaches about how evil government welfare is, they seem to be happy getting welfare themselves, receiving $70,000 per episode of Duck Dynasty from the GOP-dominated Louisiana state government. Louisiana offers tax breaks for film projects in the state. Duck Dynasty is filmed in Louisiana, so the Robertson family benefits from this as well. To date, Duck Dynasty has sucked on the... Suckled, rather, on the government teat for a whopping total of $4.5 million over 64 episodes. You've got citizens in Louisiana. I don't know how well recovered still at this point that that New Orleans has been recovered from Hurricane Katrina. I mean, obviously, it's functional. People are going there and they're having they're having fun, at least in, in the inner city stuff. But. What about the people that are are just in the poorhouse that need that assistance? I mean, it's one thing. Okay, you know, you know, if if you get a tax break for a film project and it's a smaller film thing, like like say you and I were to go down there and make a movie, we could get a tax break there. Okay, that that's for something small. That's fine. These guys were all apparently they had a fortune to begin with, and they're getting tax breaks. Just, these, are, these are not people who need tax breaks. These are people who are going to have tax breaks written for them by conservative uh, leaders because wealthy people deserve to pay less money. Yeah. Like, ugh, it's, it's, uh, fucking hell. Uh, and this is and this is the thing. This is added on to Bobby Jindal, you know, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, I'm making it illegal for you to bring a lawsuit against the big oil companies because uh, then, then they can't do. Then the, they can't put money in my pocket. Or, I mean, they can't do their jobs properly. It's, it's like what the fuck. Ah, oh, yeah. So so yeah, fuck you, Duck Dynasty people. Fuck you, Phil Robertson in particular. Fuck you, Bobby Jindal, and fuck everybody in Louisiana that is allowing it to happen. If you don't want it to happen, get up off your ass and change it. And and I say this to everybody in Louisiana. You don't like it? Change it. You are many. They are few. Think about that. Start by don't ever buy their shitty stuff. Don't watch their show. Don't buy their fucking merchandise, which is literally everywhere. Like half of Walmart. Yeah, I avoid that section of Walmart. It's kind of hard to. Uh, but there it is. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. And and you know what? If you must watch the show and, and, and just to see what it's like, I am I am going to say something that I – you probably – you even at this point, you may or may not back me up on this one for a cat because I know your stance on this. But you know what? If you really must watch the show, fucking pirate it. Don't let them get your money. I would I would actually back this up, and I don't advocate piracy in any way. But if you can screw those people out of money, yeah. Well, but you're supporting piracy, and that's that's bad. But how about you just not watch it at all? There you go. Don't I, watch I, it. And, and... It, it's terrible. But I judge people by what kind of television they watch. <laughs> And there's a guy at my work who every day watches TMZ, and and every time that he watches it and laughs honestly, I lose faith in humanity a little bit more and a little bit more. Yeah. And it's sort of like that. I'm like, if you actually enjoy this program, chances are I don't like you. Yeah, I can't. I I can't even see myself enjoying it. I, I've. You know, sometimes I, I look for news links on on FARC or whatever, and sometimes they go to TMZ. And it's usually something that's like, oh, hey, Fark Headline says this. Okay, this might be interesting. Click the link, and it's just some trashy fluff piece, and it's like, oh, fuck you. Every now and then, maybe their site might have something that that 
might be relevant to something, but for the majority of it, TMZ is just no thanks. No. I mean, if you enjoy it, you enjoy it, but I'm not going to I'm not going to sit there and say, you know, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to throw money at them. Yeah. So it's like you have the right to watch whatever you want and like whatever you want, and I have the right to disagree with you, mm-hmm. and I have, and I shouldn't think less of you for not liking the same things that you like. But there are some things where I don't know. There's some television that's just so bad. It so caters to the lowest common denominator of our society, and when you enjoy it honestly, like I get, I get it. How people like they'll watch toddlers and tiaras for the train wreck that it is. And they watch it in shame. Yeah. And they're like, I can't believe I'm fucking watching this, but I can't stop. I can almost get that. But people who watch duck dynasty and agree with the stuff that they say on there, that's incredibly racist and homophobic and shit that they shouldn't say at all. And half of it, they're just saying to get attention anyway. Mm-hmm. It's like, if you agree with that sort of stuff, I guess you can have that opinion, but you and I are never going to have anything to talk about. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you, and if you know what, if you're going to be an attention whore, then just admit it. I think we're all attention whores here to some degree. <laughs> yeah, like seriously, if if you want some press, Duck Dynasty people, if you want some press and you want people to talk about you, put your name in the headlines, go fucking donate some money to charity and talk about that. Go do something good for the world instead of opening up your big fat fucking mouths and letting trash roll out. Brahman. I am. I am not going to disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> so that is that is all of the news we have for this week, and thus it is also the end of the show. Uh, so where can we find you, Cat? Oh, you can find me on Twitter at labyrinthcat and Facebook dot com facebook.com slash nerdiscat and you can find me on what the fuck at 1201beyond.com and you can also find me over on uh, my other show nerd to the third power over on that guy with the glasses under the podcast tab what? Uh, and and speaking of which it's been like almost a month since those auditions went out i don't know if anybody's heard back yet i certainly haven't heard back but if I hear positively, then obviously people on these shows will know because I will probably spend at least half an episode on all three shows squeeing over it. So if I make it, prepare for squee. If I don't, then business as usual. <laughs> I, I just wanted to note that because uh, Doug actually did a, a uh, commentary on the Lorax review where the end had the auditions opened up. And poor Rob, he had like at least a thousand, in- including my stuff. And it's like I feel bad now. So I just sent like a demo reel of everything, and everybody's sending like you know maybe one, two, three videos at once, and I'm sitting there like, oh poor Rob, <laughs> I feel for him in that. But um, but beyond that, if you wanted to find me on the social medias or where have you, then you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at Gomer Two One Double X. You can find my material on NerdVice.com and of course my site RTGomer.com. And we mentioned throwing money at people earlier. If you want to, if you want a place to throw money, then throw some money my way. Uh, and you can do that at patreoncom slash gomer 21 X. Money, of course, will go towards things such as new equipment. Uh, in fact, in fact, my uh, actual Let's Play controller got upgraded thanks to people on Patreon. So uh, it, it's it's a good thing. Uh, if you like it, throw money at me, please. <laughs> it would be it would be great. Um, but not just me, but also throw money at my girlfriend, uh, Becky Hopkins, who does artwork and animation. And she too has a Patreon, patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Uh, throw some money at her, you'll get some artwork. Throw enough money at her, you will get some animation, some really sweet kick-ass animation. 30 seconds though, but it's worth it. And, uh, did I mention she's an award-winning animator? Damn straight she is. And, uh, so, you know, you want some artwork, you want some animation, go throw some money at her. And uh, so that's about it. Thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with the cat, signing off. Thespian Talk is an Archie Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at archiegomer.com.